this thanks a lot for joining in today on a saturday the session is what the heck is roi and we need to learn how to measure success and not vanity okay it's a practical no nonsense webinar series right i do not want to actually get into a lot of fluff i do not want to get into a lot of uh, you can say theory in terms of which is impractical theory like it should not be definitions and that's about it i want to get into practical knowledge okay i want to give it out to you in a very no nonsense format ki okay this is what it is what happens here is i do some crazy research i have some absurd observations i add a pinch of creativity and a whole dash of inspiration and that is what this is marketing is all about as for who am i uh, my name is jaljeet ajani i have been in the marketing space for more than i think 12 to 15 years now in the start of my career i was more into the content creation aspect in animation and visual effects but over a period of time i have actually started my own digital marketing agency along with my partner amjad desai okay and the name of the agency is sinclarity right uh, you can visit us on sinclarity.in as well as you can go to sinclarity.in/webinars wherein you can see all of our past webinars which we have done okay awesome so what the heck is roi and let's start to measure success and not vanity now let's look at the definition of roi and it's a very simple definition which is it is a performance measure used to evaluate efficiency or profitability of an investment basically what what roi is all about it's just a very simple ratio if you have invested some, a certain amount okay what is the value you are getting above it now let's say you have invested into marketing so you might have invested into social media ad budgets xyz now when you do that at that point what is the output which you have gained out of it did it convert into customers and that's the whole idea so it's a ratio when we say ratio the ratio is simply the profit which is your result upon the cost of investment okay so if we were to simplify this further okay imagine if you are doing a campaign which is costing you somewhere around 36000 or 30000 let's say 30000 Now, when you do a thirty thousand investment, and you make a profit of, let's say, three lakh or three hundred thousand, okay, that is straightforward. A hundred, a ten x jump on. It's a ten x return, right? So this is what ROI is normally, and that's how it's supposed to be calculated. Now, what happens in marketing is. there is a lot of uh, you can say different elements which come into play because of which it gets difficult so why is roi difficult for marketing there are too many channels today imagine if you guys are wanting to market something you will have your own website first you will have maybe your insta page you will have linked uh, you will have linkedin facebook you might have a, a niche community maybe on etsy and you might have whatsapp and so many other channels right sms mobile phone uh, radio tv xyz these are all the channels where you can spread your message across now when you spread your message across on so many channels you use so many channels for marketing you get a lot of data when you get this data are you able to crunch that data into meaningful you can say into some meaning which makes sense to your bottom line which makes sense to you know your actual business and that is what the whole difficulty is all about okay now how many imagine uh, out of the people who are attending here how many social media accounts do you have or which all social media channels are you a part of are you on instagram can you please uh, reply in the chat that would really help me what about facebook yukta says kind of 
I I do understand that we are kind of on Facebook, but imagine if you were to market, wouldn't you market on Facebook? Correct. So my point is, even if we are not active, we might have our accounts, but still we would, you know, go ahead and market on certain channels where we are not that active. But we want to spread because our audience is there. Isabel says depends on the product. Correct. It depends on the product, but say for example, your product. your audience stays on facebook as well as your audience stays on instagram as well as your audience is on linkedin now facebook and instagram are way more affordable channels in terms of ads versus something like linkedin right on linkedin on an average now i'm talking in indian currency as such but on linkedin to generate a lead You would spend somewhere around two and a half thousand rupees per lead. Uh, on LinkedIn, actually, it's it's not like that. It depends on what is what is it that you are selling. Maybe you are a B two B company and you are trying to sell across Facebook, Insta, and LinkedIn. All of these three. Maybe you are trying to reach out to an HR on LinkedIn. You are maybe let's say you are into something like. Uh, yoga okay you are into something like yoga what is um, now imagine yoga we would say ki my audience is on facebook and linkedin uh facebook and instagram mainly but your business model you have figured out ki you are into selling yoga courses to corporate clients okay because you don't believe in selling it to individuals but you want to sell it to companies during the lockdown everyone was at home and everyone uh, has been you know uh, working from home so they have got bad postures and everything so you want to do a corporate activity correct so my my point is there are different audiences we we are sure ki there are different audiences but also my audience might be across spread across on all these channels i might not want to use linkedin directly for this generation i might want to use it as an amplification or some other reason similarly i might want to use instagram more on the lines of let's say under instagram we have today something like stories okay we have uh, something on the lines of reels we have something on the lines of uh, instagram feed so when you want to run an ad what is the kind of ad you are running on one platform also there are different models or there are different assets which are there for ads on a single platform to run a story ad is a good idea is what most of the people say but when you will start running those ads you might come up with the whole thing okay my audience is not living on instagram on stories they are living on the instagram feed so all these things all this data is there and that's what i'm trying to say ki there is too much data to make sense out of and especially at the end of the day when you are running a campaign you are more focused on your bottom line versus you know at that point the roi the roi comes in only as an after effect but what if we were to think of roi right from the start and that would make some amount of difference okay uh, the next part is there are too many vanity metrics that people are focused on if people run campaigns then people get happy with things like likes people get happy with things like uh, followers okay whereas these things are not going to actually help you out isabel says it would have to be determined as part of business objective correct that's that's true we need to look at it from that angle but at this moment there are let's say you are a business and you are working with agencies you are working with uh, maybe partners or you are working with a freelancer now is that freelancer giving you all these things all this idea most of the times i have noticed a lot of times agencies and all they have very simplistic reports which just tell you about you know which make them look good like ridhima says engagement is important on posts engagement is important on posts but engagement is considered across various uh, 
factors like a like is also an engagement a comment is also an engagement if people are uh, let's say sharing it that is also engagement now a like versus a comment versus a share are all differently rated so we need to understand what do we want now most of the times uh, if you're working with a freelancer or if you're working with someone who is junior in terms of, you know, who is handling this kind of a campaign, they would show you likes and they would show you comments and they would tell you, Ki, okay, I'm getting this. So my uh, actually, um, you know, the campaign is doing good and you will feel Ki it is doing good because it is a dopamine rush to see likes on your particular post. But that is not the complete truth. Yukta says, we get carried away with these superficial things and forget our main goal. Perfect. Yeah, this is what happens most of the times. The second thing what happens is uh, during a campaign, you are also wanting to optimize things. You also have to look at it in a very straight up fashion every week, week after week or three days or, you know, you will have your own uh, rhythm to look at the campaigns and optimize it. So you will start to look at these things in a more clear way and start looking at actual insights. Okay, what are the optimization needed? Now, what are these? We will look at it. We will look at what are, we will look at few of these so that it's uh, more clear. Attribution is difficult. When you are doing an omni-channel marketing, like let's say, for example, you are doing, uh, you're running ads on social media, you're also doing search engine marketing it is going to help it is going to be difficult to attribute what actually uh, you know got us the client okay attribution is difficult because maybe someone has seen your website ad on the search but they might not have clicked on it okay but it helped in brand recognition at that point later on when they came on social media again there was a retargeting ad which hit them and they again didn't interact with the ad, but on the fourth time when they saw the ad, they must have clicked through. So this kind of uh, metric, which is now something on the lines of frequency is something we, we don't consider this at all at times. Okay. Ridhima adds, what a few hacks to optimize our content online, say on website. Uh, Ridhima, what I would uh, request you to do is, uh, Ritima and everyone, put your questions in the Q&A console. At the end of the session, we will have a question and answer session, wherein I will go through all the, uh, you can say, questions. Okay, thank you. There is also one of the difficult things for marketers is they do not understand the business model at times. Even though, uh, see, today what has happened is, Many people have come into marketing because the career shows a lot of growth. The career uh, shows a lot of scope in the future. So a lot of youngsters have gotten into it, but they do not have actual background about, you know, what is marketing? What is a business? Why does it need marketing and all these things? So a lot of time they don't understand your business. They just say, I know social media. And that's why they have become a marketer. So you need to understand ki if you are at this point looking at someone who in your team or in your organization or you are working with someone who is not understanding this business okay and actually help them across with this now let's look at what used to happen earlier now these are few ways in which in the 20th century we used to run our cap um, you can say marketing campaigns this is pre-internet. Pre-internet, there was TV ads, radio ads, direct mail. Uh, there were a lot of hoardings everywhere. Uh, there is radio and there are even film theater ads. Okay. Now, what used to happen way back is when these ads used to run, there was no measure or metric through which we could understand, ki, okay, this is what is going to help me figure this out. Now, there were reasons for this also. But imagine how were hoardings being sold and today also hoardings are being sold like that in India. What happens is if there is a popular place where there is a lot of foot traffic, lot of eyeballs, okay, 
the word they will use is uh, this area has x number of footfall okay in a day um, 200000 people cross this area they will tell you 2 lakh people are you know going to see your ad what they are and they they would not even say see your ad they will say footfall is going to be 2 lakh now when you say footfall what it means is there is a lot of people who are just passing by maybe 2 lakh people will pass by that area we don't know whether they will or they won't see your coding but the intention is out of those 2 lakh few people will see the hoarding and they will recognize it or recollect okay so it it is it works in case of if you have the budget it works in case of brand building but you don't you can't work with just one hoarding you have to put the hoardings everywhere okay like i'll show you some examples of successful hoardings so a hoarding is also known as a billboard and you can see out here this is apple and apple still today invests in billboards so they are running this campaign short on iphone successfully from 2016 till date whenever a new iphone is released all across the world hoardings are set up in such a way wherein the tagline is just short on iphone and the name of the person who has done it what happens with these kind of hoarding says people are seeing a great image which is shot on a mobile phone by an actual person so the thought or the aspiration which people get is if i have an iphone i can shoot these kind of images which is not a bad thought to have so there is a way in which hoardings are used and these are campaigns which are you know doing amazing online oh sorry amazing on billboards but this these are am- campaigns which are supported by a lot of digital you can say uh, surround sound also what i mean by that is there is this campaign is not being run on isolation the same campaign is also shown on youtube okay the same campaign also happens on maybe um if there is a ad budget online then they would show the same campaign across on maybe google and display ads and so on and so forth even social media for that case this is the kind of campaign which a magazine like campaign or uh, ad age and all will be talking about so it gets a lot of pr also so if you were to just search for short on iphone campaign as a google search okay you will see people are writing about it this is social samosa which is writing about it and there is a lot of noise around this this is campaign they apple also has this on their website wherein you can actually share your best photos and that's what a campaign is apple's new short on iphone cam- campaign captures spirit of india okay so you will see a lot of noise digital noise is also supporting this offline campaign so today it's a mixed world we are living in which is digital as well which is online as well as offline and that's what these guys are taking care of which is great but if you were to ask someone what is the Uh, roi of a hoarding okay for a product which you guys are maybe trying to market or something it will be difficult to figure that out because you cannot track that data second part is direct mail direct mail was also being done earlier wherein direct mail used to uh, go across to a lot of you can say people who have subscribed so a good example of this is readers digest okay readers digest is a uh, you can say magazine and that was supposed to work completely on subscription and this is way back until date i think it's working and inside that magazine there are a lot of ads and everything which are for that particular group of people or community of people who read readers digest so instead of you could either do a direct mail 
send send the direct mail in uh, person or you could run an ad inside of readers digest also but imagine it will still give you data like we have um, sent across readers digest to 200000 of our subscribers it will not be able to tell they will not be able to tell you ki out of these 200000 subscribers how many people saw your ad because it's an offline book how how can you measure that how you could measure that uh, later i would tell you but let's say you send you do this campaign in the month of january and in the month of feb and march you see how many people contact you there would ob obviously be a contact number or something if there is a spike in sales or if there is a spike in inquiries that's how you can attribute some amount to this but it can be for a variety of reasons maybe your intended buyer did not see that magazine okay maybe it was someone who is a relative of that intended buyer who saw the magazine and who narrated hey you know what i saw this ad and then that that particular product is for you i saved the number here's the number you can never understand what's happening but still you will get some spike in your you can say incoming inquiries or inbound inquiries if that is happening then you can somewhere attribute success over there but still very vague the third form is tv ads tv ads are you know one of the main things which was before internet how brands used to actually market or you can say run ads for uh, to spread the word in the market so how tv ads used to work is there was a prime time okay so prime time was some, supposed to be somewhere around in india it is somewhere around 8 pm se leke 10 pm okay 8 to 10 pm if you were to run an ad during that slot highest number of audience would see those tv series and that's why you would want to run your ads across those uh, you can say that time zone now if your ad is being showcased at that time zone the cost for running a 30 second ad would be enormous the return you will have to again wait and watch what is the spike you're getting in sales again imagine if you're running a product which is somewhat like uh, an offline product like soap okay now if soap was advertised and people used to buy people would go to their nearby stores and buy it there was no walmart there was no online amazon or anything right so people would go to the local store and buy that soap so at that point again that attribution would come in later like you would understand you would not get it in a very dynamic way you would understand if people have seen the ad then have they taken the action so you would have to wait for their action and then you would have to say okay maybe in roughly two or three months you would see a spike overall and then you would say this is this campaign worked for us let's already start working on the next campaign okay so this is how tv ads work an interesting fact over here is you know a lot of tv dramas are known as soap operas the name comes only because a lot of ads for soap used to run during that time okay so people wanted to sell soap and during that time the audience that buys soap is an audience who watches a drama kind of a serial because maybe women are seeing it maybe elder adults are seeing it so that's why soap used to be marketed during these drama shows and that's why the drama shows were known as soap operas until date it is so okay so customer would see the noise at the end of the day would see the ad and go to the local store why i'm saying noise it's basically because ads are nothing else but interruptions you were seeing you were seeing and you were seeing a film or you were seeing maybe a tv series and in between there is an interruption so that's why i'm clear i'm saying it it is the noise so customer would see the noise they would go to the local store and they might buy it now when they buy it you would obviously want your sales rep or your marketing guy to go there and understand from that one local store whether there has been you know more sales or something obviously supply demand and all those things would work out and that's how you would gather data offline which would be painful 
but you would still do it and you would understand you'll get a fair idea but still not a very concrete idea so there are too many variables in this now with digital marketing what has happened is data is on your fingertips you know what are you talking about people when they see your product or service ad they might click on it and immediately you get the a person has clicked immediately you get these many people have been reached immediately you get these many people have seen it multiple times you know so you get all of this quite actively in digital marketing and that's why it's considered to be one of the best ways to market yourself but even though this is a fact another fact is only 20% of marketers are able to track roi okay uh, now imagine you have data but only 20% of people are able to make sense of that data and one of the main reasons i feel is people do not understand business people get into marketing because of it seems like a very cool place to be it seems like a very one of the most uh, you can say demand heavy fields wherein there is a lot of demand for marketers today so people choose their uh, businesses and all those things uh, people choose this uh, profession now one other fact is there are a lot of startups happening there are a lot of individuals who are also starting their own thing and they would want to market now when these guys would want to market then they also they are in two boats they are starting a business as well as they are now thinking about marketing so they have two three hats to play so even though they understand business but op- running operations is also painful so you cannot do everything you have to get people who know their stuff over a period of time maybe in the start small smaller things are possible but when you want to really scale up you need to look at it in a different angle so one of the things why marketers are not able to track is because most organizations are sales led what i mean by this is people do not understand marketing jargons and metrics like if i were to tell you and marketers normally feel ki marketing their work is to spread the word and then when they get the lead they feel wow we have got a lead but most of the times if you see the lead does not convert easily now they there is a term for this people say mql that is marketing qualified leads is what marketers are supposed to generate and sales people would say it it should be i should get sales qualified lead from marketers the difference between mql and sql is marketing qualified leads are leads which want to maybe hear what you have to say but they are not intended buyers at the moment and sales qualified lead are people who want to hear what you say but they also want something from you so those are the intended buyers and most of the organizations are sales led so you will always see a uh, you know a kind of a rift between marketing and sales and this is where this is one issue which leads to the confusion marketers don't know the math and where why they don't know the math there is a lot there is a lot to do already okay so i want to first you know take a look at business basics now business basics are nothing else but let's understand first first what is it to run a business and what do we term as profit what do we term as gross profit what do we term as net profit we will just take 2 to 5 minutes so first thing is total revenue imagine so total revenue is nothing else but total sales imagine if i have done sales worth 1000 rupees that's my total revenue now what am i selling i am selling some goods or services and imagine the cost of that goods or service is somewhere around 200 rupees okay the next thing which happens is i calculate my profit which is gross profit that is just simple the total revenue minus the cost of goods which gives me as 800 okay 
Now I add expenses or I subtract expenses from this further. Expenses are operational expenses. It might be for marketers. It might be something like the tools that they are using. Uh, it might be electricity. It might be salaries, rent, so on and so forth. So if I remove or if I subtract the expenses, then I get my income before taxes, which would be let's say here in this case it is six hundred, and let's figure let's see taxes are maybe around fifty percent of that. So. 300 we all need to pay taxes for running our business for running the country so on and so forth and at the end of the day your net profit then which is the bottom line is 300 this is how a business works you might hear a lot of sales guys talking about bottom line you know it does not add to my bottom line or else owners also talk about this when they say that bottom line they are talking about net profit not gross profit so understanding this, why is it important is because this is going to give you directly your next most important thing, which is lifetime value. Okay. Your customer who is there, you need to understand a customer buys your service or product. They are not going to just buy it once. Your intention is to make a repeat customer out of them. How you will do that? You will do it through your operations. You will do it by giving them a good service. You will do it by delivering what you have promised them. If you can do that, then the person will buy from you again. So let's imagine here a scenario wherein an average monthly revenue from a client is 1000. And my average net profit per client is 200. Okay, so net profit is this bottom line. Okay, so I'm saying my bottom line per client is 200. Okay. And if I say, and that is per month. So per year, it becomes 2400. And lifetime value is calculated as average. My client sticks on to me for three years. And once it's three years, maybe either they mature into a bigger organization, or they mature into a different format, wherein they start looking out for different services. Okay, so and this is true for anything it's true for let's say let's say for example you are a diaper company okay and a diaper company is selling diapers and one customer is buying monthly x number of diapers and that is for 2400 for the entire year and they would continue to do that for three to four years based on till when till the age when diapers are used right so that's your average lifetime value of the client that means the lifetime value over here for three years is 7200 okay now if my lifetime value is 7200 then as a marketing uh, basic okay as a marketing basic we can calculate cost per acquisition that is how much should i spend to get this customer and it's average the industry standard is 5% of lifetime value. So you're, to get one customer, you can spend around 360. This can be 360 rupees, this can be 360 dollars, whatever it is. You're spending 360 rupees right now, let's say, to get a client who is going to give you a value of 7,200. Not a bad deal. Okay, this is the number which we need because CPA directly informs us how much camp like what is the campaign that I have to run, what is the budget of the campaign, so on and so forth. Let's see that. So let's see how to calculate ROI. We can spend somewhere around 360 rupees on various marketing activities to get one lead. Okay. Therefore, if my aim is to get a hundred customers. I can spend 360 into 100, that is 36,000 as my campaign budget. Where do I spend it? I spend it on social organic, social paid, SEO, SEM, email marketing, PR, giveaway, website. I have all these options. I have to decide where to spend it. And where, where will we spend it? We'll spend it wherever we are getting more people onto our website. Right? So when you do all of that, Let's imagine, uh, again, this is a scenario wherein 
we get 10,000 reach on our ads, which we are running with that budget. Out of the 10,000, 1,000 people will click through and go to the site, out of which I am calculating 20 people will fill my form, out of which two people will become my paying customers, and, I, and they pay me 50,000 each. That, will, that means my spend, which was there, was 36,000. But I got in return 50,000 each as my customer. Okay, therefore, my campaign works. Any, any doubt in this? Because what, what we saw in these slides, right? Any doubts uh, from this slide onwards, please, please uh, let me know. If this is clear, please type in clear in the chat and send it across. That will give me information about whether you guys are on the same page or not. Isabel says it's clear. What about others? Guys, if you have doubts, please ask me doubts for this thing because this is the single most important thing from today's session, which I want you guys to understand. Yukta says no doubts, awesome. Okay, uh, moving forward. Now, I have taken some assumptions out here and I am taking very conservative assumptions. Conversion ratio, if you see the trend online, it is somewhere around two to five. Do you guys understand what conversion ratio is? Awesome. Isabel understands it. Pranay says no. Okay. So Pranay, what, what happens out here is if you look at it, there are 10,000 people who saw my ads. But out of 10,000, only I am catching 10% people. That is 1,000 people go to my website. Okay. So that is 10,000 divided by 1,000 is equal to 10. So my conversion ratio out there for just that part, which is from add to this part of reaching to my website is 10, 10%. Okay. But if I was to look at it in a different way, that out of now 1,000 people who are reaching on my website, only 20 people are filling the form. That is a conversion ratio of 2%. Okay. And out of that 20, only two, uh, two people, that is again 10%, uh, sorry, that is again, I'm considering a conversion ratio from 20 divided by two is equal to 10. Isabel says conversion ratio of 5% of transactions is almost a miracle. Uh, yes, but it's happening. It happens in, uh, it happens if you have the right audience. Like I have seen ROAS, that is ROAS, uh, return on ad spend of more than, in some cases, six to eight percent also. Yeah, targeting is the first step. Absolutely. But these are these are very generic uh, ideas. Correct. Audience identification is a must. I will come to that part. So. We need to understand one part over here, which is every stage is conversion. Okay. Every stage we are converting from one, uh, you can say one level to another. Uh, let's look at something. So normally these are the kind of, you can say ad funnels, which you will see wherein let's say there is lead generation, lead nurture and sales. The whole idea over here is at this is the 10,000 uh, people, which I was talking about. And then through that 10,000, only thousand come through and through the 10,000, uh, 10, only 20 come through and through the 20, only two come through. Okay. So this is what uh, Pranay 
it looks like in terms of uh, when you actually start looking at the funnel, right? But the whole idea over here is these funnels are very, uh, very complicated, and you might get uh, you might get confused with this. So what I would suggest is look at it in simple language, which is how many people come from one part to another to another to another, and that's how you understand each stage becomes a conversion for you then. So let's look at some real KPIs that matter, okay? Now, this is where you guys need to answer uh, me. Um, imagine I have 1 lakh followers, 100,000 followers versus 1,000 intended buyers. What would you want? Do you want 100,000 followers or thousand intended buyers. Please answer in the chat. Guys, hundred thousand followers. Pranay says depends on what is your current requirement. Okay, that's. Uh, Pranay, can you uh, answer one question? What is, uh, why are we marketing? Why do we do marketing? What's the idea? What's the bottom line of marketing? Ritima says, okay, Pranay says brand image creation. Yukta says one lakh followers. Okay. Pranay, with the brand image, what are you going to get? Let's say we do marketing for brand image. What will we get? Uh, is it okay, Pranay, if I put you on a call? Like, uh, do we, if we talk? Because then this will be faster. One second. It will be great to make this more interactive. Pranay, you can unmute yourself and we can actually talk, talk with her. Okay, won't be able to connect. No problem. So again, let's look at it this way. If you are saying you want to first create brand image and then you want customers, right? Now, my question is, if you are saying at the end of the day, you want customers, you, I hope you want customers who are paying you for your service, right? So what is a follower and what is an intended buyer according to you guys? Purva says intended buyers and game is to generate revenue. Uh, numbers might differ though. Correct. Yeah, Purva. Numbers, see, numbers are just put there. Uh, the idea is right now people are running behind vanity metrics, as I said. People are running behind something like followers is a vanity metric. Okay. I would tell you why it's a vanity metric because we are asking everyone to follow us. The biggest mistake in marketing which people are doing is they feel their product is for everyone. Everyone wants to buy this. And when you say everyone wants to buy this, means your marketing communication is not intended for anyone out there. And when it's not intended for anyone out there, it does not relate, it does not, you know, reach out to the right people. And randomly people start following, they might be like, oh, yeah, this is good. But they will never follow through on their uh, thing. They will never come and, you know, buy from you. So Pranay, again, if your goal is customers, why are you concentrating on followers? You are concentrating on brand image, I understand, but even brand image is you cannot do a campaign. Imagine this. If I ask you, let's give me, you know, 200,000 rupees and I will create your brand image versus I will tell you, give me 200,000 rupees and I will get you 200 paying customers. What will you want at that point? brand image or customers directly because your end goal was customers correct 
so over here also what i am trying to show you guys is there is 100000 followers but it can be various followers maybe you are a product which is selling diapers diapers are basically the target audience is parents but imagine on your diaper selling uh, insta page there are people who are not parents or not intending to marry also in the near future what's the use but you make these very cool cuddly commercials which people keep on liking uh is simple says will these customers become followers and expand on my reach or will they be one time customers and never come back correct that's a fair question uh see more than anything we need to understand ki when we when we are running a business or when we are running um, let's say a marketing campaign we want to go niche as niche as we can to get our audience initially we might not have the numbers initially it might not look super cool when you see other accounts you might feel like oh shit i do not have these numbers but the idea is if you do it consistently like i'll give you a metric uh, there is a Uh, i am doing research right now on you know youtube and how do you get to 1 million subscribers and after what i found out is uh, there are few people who i follow and what they have mentioned they are on 1 to 2 million subscribers right now what they have mentioned over a period of time is if you do consistently youtube for 3 years you will reach to a million followers that does not mean everyone who is doing youtube will reach to a million followers but if you start pushing out video which is actually helping people if you start pushing out people uh, videos which is actually intended towards a niche then that would really help uh, i'll tell you a good example of this one second let's do Let's just brainstorm for a second. Imagine if I am selling, let's say, uh, burgers. Okay. Now, if I am selling burgers, then my audience can be anyone who eats a burger or anyone who eats. is what we would think about right if anyone is hungry people should think about my burger and that is my audience but with that information what is the creative which i am creating i will not be appealing to anyone i am competing with let's say mcdonalds or kfc and you know all these guys how do i make my niche okay so right now i need to look at burgers in a different way and imagine if i make burgers um that are only for corporate okay work from home people okay people who are working from home i want to just target them so now i have got this now what i get with that one information which i have added or one detail which i have added i am not targeting everyone okay again to illustrate this one second imagine if this is everyone who likes burgers okay and already there is mcdonalds and all who are making noise i don't want the biggest piece of this pie okay what i want is i want to start somewhere here who is this person how can i reach out to that person and what will happen is if this person is the work from home person 
and if i can position my burger that you know this particular burger is made up of uh, maybe ingredients which are going to make you um it's made of healthy fats or something which is going to help you concentrate more be more productive x y z something i will figure out and i will start narrating that story when people start seeing that suddenly what happens is this audience increases what this person does is this person starts talking to another person this person starts talking to another person and slowly i reach out to even people who are not into burgers or who are not my target audience okay i'll give you a good example in mumbai right now uh, there is something which has happened i don't know uh, right now we are seeing this whole electric bike uh, you know uh, funda which is coming in the entire world is going electric people know resources uh, are you know limited so that's why we are trying to go towards electric cars electric bikes now tesla is one of the leading players abroad but in india look at this this is a local mode of transport which is started and this is started only in bkc okay so bkc bangalore uh, it is started also i think in delhi the idea over here is you can take this for rent if you are in the bkc area and you can ride it and drop yourself from the station to your office or you know again back whatever so in that one area you can actually drive this car uh, drive this bike now the whole intention over here is for bkc is a corporate park okay bkc is a corporate park but you will see the bikes are getting used not by the corporate people at, at this moment it is getting used by these kind of youngsters who don't even go to these offices because this is a new thing it's fun to ride a yulu bike an electric bike and what these guys are then doing is they are documenting their journey okay on uh, youtube or else they are documenting it on instagram and so on and so forth so when they are doing this what is happening is yulu is getting uh Yulu is getting famous, and Yulu is getting uh, understanding about how people are using this service. So imagine this guy; he has this uh, screenshot or thumbnail with this bike, and he has termed it as the future. So the intended audience over here they understood way back because of the lockdown. There are no corporate uh, people coming to offices, so on and so forth. but what they wanted to do is they wanted to do a pre launch and in the pre launch they wanted people to try their hands on the bike so how do you spread this message you spread this message to youngsters who are you know uh, always the first adopters and when they are doing this they are automatically getting more traction online yulu is getting famous yulu is now working now there is yulu bicycles in navi mumbai which has happened so these are the first adopters then it will become people will start using it more and more and more and it will become mainstream that's the whole intention so this is how we actually start expanding so from work from home i can then start also talking about uh, maybe i figure out ki there are working moms who are my audience for my burger so i start coming out with a series of burgers which are only targeted towards working moms you know and that's how i can actually expand my tribe and expand my audience so this is this is why one of the main things which we all need to understand is numbers are nothing in this whole thing imagine if you don't get if you don't sell your product or service you what are you going to market you will have to shut down right so that's why the whole idea is 1 lakh followers or uh, 1000 intended buyers second is 1 lakh followers versus 100 niche targeted prospects when i say intended buyers they might buy from you niche targeted prospects are again people who are like you know when i am talking about the burger example i am talking about work from home or corporate people who are working from home 
so when i target them then if i get my first 100 customers and if i help them to spread the word somehow that will automatically get me my 1 lakh followers we do not you could you cannot start from a bigger number you can always start from a smaller number right if you think about it 100 comes before a thousand thousand comes before a one lakh so even if you want one lakh followers you don't want one lakh wrong followers you want one lakh good followers who are part of your target audience okay Again, one lakh audience versus just 100 paying customers. I would always go for 100 paying customers. What about you guys? Will you go for 100 paying customers or will you go for one lakh audience? Pranay is now, <laughs> Pranay is now getting it. He's coming uh, to track. He is talking about 100 paying customers. Awesome. Because ye saw log jo aap se you know, you brand ke mein kuch na kuch ba baat karenge, aapka brand image ban jayega. Sanjay says uh, 100 paying, awesome. Glad. So, 1 lakh or 100, always go for 100. You will reach that 1 lakh for sure. Okay. Awesome. Now, let's look at some of the channels and some of the things, or uh, some of the KPIs. Uh, I want this session from here onwards to be more interactive. If you guys have any doubts on a slide, please uh, put it in the chat and I will take it at that time. So when we look at social media as a channel, we should not be looking at likes because a like is not adding anything to my bottom line. We should not be looking at follower count. It does not add to my bottom line. Reach is important. Reach is going to help me, you know, uh, reach to more people. So reach is a very important metric. Reach also, if I'm looking at reach, if it reaches more people, I should also be looking at whether save people are saving this or not. Because if people are saving it or if people are sharing it, then I get a approval that my content is working then I need to continue with that content. I cannot create anything and everything and expect that to work. Any doubts here, social media? When we talk about email, database size does not matter. It does not matter if you have 20 lakh emails or if you have a thousand emails what matters is if you get thousand emails slowly growing to ten thousand okay and you are continuously talking to them through email that is what your intention should be like i'll give you an example i've been doing this is i think my 34th webinar so for 34 weeks i catch up with uh, people across on this channel through my webinar unknown people okay most of you guys are unknown there are few people who have maybe who i have met in a physical version of psyche when we were doing it but most of you guys are unknown and in these 34 weeks i make it a point every saturday to come across for two hours and have this session what has happened with this is we have built or we have reached over or I have interacted with over, I think, three to 4,000 people, which is crazy, okay? Database size does not matter. What matters is your open rate. So how you need to look at it is if you have 10,000 people and always have this math, like whatever the size of your database, have that number. When you are sending an email, how many people are opening it? That opening, if there is a opening rate or there is there are X number of people opening, that means those people want to listen from you. Those people want to see what you are doing. They are interested. The rest of the database might not be that great. Okay, it might also depend on what is the content that you are sending. So open rate is good. You need to understand that. 
it gives you a direct understanding of whether or not your email is required or not required in my inbox. CTR is click through rate, which is once I have opened your mail, there might be some click, uh, there might be some link to click. Have I clicked that link? Has your customer clicked that link and gone to maybe your website or your landing page or your portal or something? If that CTR is happening, if you are getting a good click through rate, those are people who are more excited to see what you are doing. Okay. So this is like today when we send email to our subscribers, there are good number of registrations that we get through our email. Okay. So that means there are people who are looking out for our email and then they subscribe or they, uh, sorry, they register for this event. So that's how you will understand what's your click through rate. SEO. Now this is the most you know, like one of the most uh, confusing topics out there in terms of digital marketing when it comes to ROI, because there are two reasons. One is, its result apko You cannot see the result immediately. So a lot of people they throw on around a lot of jargon. They throw around a lot of technicality, and you will start if you are investing in seo you will start feeling frustrated okay so seo the no, the name suggests search engine optimization okay what it means is is it to rank higher do you guys think ranking higher is good for me any answers ranking higher is it good for us come on public you guys are Awake. Ridhima says yes. Okay. More visibility. Okay. Now, whenever we ask about ranking higher, we need to ask the question, what am I ranking for? You know, what happens at times when you're doing SEO, you start getting, you start getting ranked for the wrong words or words which are useless. Like, uh, if we are doing, let's say we are a digital marketing agency, sometimes we get ranked for a word, which is like Zoom webinar. Okay. Now Zoom webinar, if that article was only on Zoom webinar and how to do a webinar and all those things, it would be great. But this article was not about that. This article was about digital marketing. And in that there was a keyword Zoom webinar, which got picked for some reason. So even if I would get ranked higher, I'm not getting my intended buyer or customer out there. So high traffic does not mean high conversion is what I'm coming to. Intended traffic is important. Okay. Search intent is one of the main things which needs to be looked at when you are looking out for ranking higher in SEO. Now, what is search intent? Search intent is if I am searching for a term which is digital marketing. Okay. And few agencies start popping up online. Okay. And when these few agencies start popping up, that means most of the people online are searching for digital marketing agencies. People are wanting to understand, they are wanting to work with agencies or they are wanting to understand which are the best agencies. Now this can only happen if people are searching for digital marketing agencies as a keyword. If when digital marketing agencies as a keyword is getting ranked. So let's, let's check this out. Let's do it live. So we'll understand. So if I search for digital marketing, I'm getting, you know, what are the top things? What is digital marketing? What are types of digital marketing? How do I, so this is all what, what, what? That means most of the people are confused about the word digital marketing and they want some clarity on that to understand what exactly is digital marketing. How can they use it? So that's why you are seeing Google ranking all the blogs which are actually intended towards explaining what is digital marketing higher. So that means digital marketing is confusing is what we can all understand the intent 
always with the term digital marketing google defaults it to understanding di digital uh, marketing now the second part is digital marketing agency so digi shares now these are agencies which are coming in if you see which is great if you see uh, this is showing me digital marketing agency that means and this is a high value keyword because there are not one but one two three four ads which are there okay on the top page plus there are three on the bottom of the page so that means there are seven ads which are running on this particular keyword it's a high competitive keyword the main intention always is it's understood that if people are searching for digital marketing agency google has to show them few agencies which are on top like right now these agencies are on top now when i mix the word mumbai does my result change yes the moment i have added mumbai digi shares which was on top came down aggregating sites which are like you know manifest and digital agency network they came on top so the most important thing out here is the search intent changes with keywords if you see so when we are trying to compete for these kind of keywords we need to understand now to rank higher for the keyword of digital marketing agency because who will search for digital market marketing agency maybe someone who wants to work with a marketing agency so that means that particular keyword if i rank higher it is going to be useful for me again high traffic does not mean high conversion it can be like right now i am just showing an example to you guys so i went over there right now i am not a intended traffic so i am not important to any of those agencies as such so this is this is the whole idea which we need to understand now roi for seo is constant increase in intended traffic increase in form fills increasing leads asking for your product or service if your agency is going to be able to help you with this then this is what you need to go in for this is the roi for seo that you need to look at you need to ask them about these things and there are no straight or no easy answers to these questions SEO is a long term game but if played right it can give you a lot of benefits okay and people uh, who are able to answer these questions of ROI for SEO are very few so you need to that itself will be the filter when you are trying to work with one of them okay so with this i am uh, more or less done with my whole presentation okay i would take in few questions which are there uh if you guys have more questions if you have any doubts with regards to the session we just had then please let me know because that would really help me understand what more to add to this particular session are you clear in terms of roi like what how do you calculate it and on a broad level how do you start thinking about roi because roi is not a simple straightforward answer as it is the number of channels jitne change hote rahenge utna you will get confused ki how do we calculate roi okay purva has a question would it be better to go for lower ranking or less expensive keywords to begin your seo process okay uh, purva one of the things when you are trying to rank for seo in the start right um what happens is your domain does not have the right amount of authority there is something known as domain authority and page authority so because your domain does not have a good authority number google is not going to give it that value when even if you write great content okay so and obviously you to find your voice to find your company's voice what to write about it is going to take some time so the best way to start is by starting on rather than less expensive i would say low ranking keywords but not low ranking it will be low keyword difficulty 
okay keywords that are easy to rank for like it might have a less amount or less volume of search but slowly slowly jaise aap wahan pe build karte jaoge because what is happening is because these are the keywords which are being searched for less not many bigger companies go in for these keywords so to build your authority if you pick these less searched keywords what will happen is over a period of time people will start clicking on them and when they start clicking on them google will reward you for this behavior and it will increase your domain authority will go up and over a time if your content is good people will stick on to your page then your page authority will go up and that's how you can then mature towards a higher keyword or towards better keywords so search engine optimization does not uh, like you don't need to think about less expensive keywords and more expensive keywords but you can just uh, look at which keywords are low uh, low search have low search volume right now go in for that in the start i hope i hope that answers your question manohar says uh, he has missed uh, two webinars so manohar what i would say is you can just go into singularity.in uh go to webinar okay i will share the link with you also and you have campaign based marketing strategy that like you have missed 20 and 27th feb uh those are not y- up yet but i think they will be up by next week by the coming week it should be up by wednesday or something ritima for some reason she has disappeared but i would just go ahead and answer her question she has asked two questions what are few hacks to optimize our content online okay now it's a very uh, there's a very short answer and there's a very long answer first thing i would not say uh, think about hacks because first i need to understand what exactly is the content the best hack in that sense to for creating content online would be to do crazy research and to come up with original content which is one of the most difficult things because if you search for things in you know domains different domains on the first page observe what are the first 10 rankings what are they writing about how are they writing so this is one of the first hack key you search and understand if there is a keyword or if there is a product or service how and what has been written about it in what format it has been written if you even understand this one thing key like let's say for example when i search for digital marketing most of the articles are what is digital marketing the digital marketing plan create a digital marketing uh, you know the complete guide to digital marketing what this uh, helps me understand is if i was to rank on the top i have to create similar type of content which demystifies digital marketing which makes it simple for people to understand what exactly digital marketing is which makes people uh, which explains people how they can start on their journey of digital marketing so this is one of the first things you need to first search for your keywords see what exactly are the things which are getting ranked based on that understand what exactly is the uh, you can say search intent what is the format in which people are you know sharing their information if it is a blog then you high chances you will also have to make a blog and you will have to make a long format of article okay normally one of the things which people do with content is online they think 350 words 500 words itna but to actually rank on those big as articles you need around 5000 to 40000 word articles yeah you heard it right 40000 words because that will be backed by research that will be backed by a lot of things okay so that's that's what is needed based uh, based on my understanding uh, ritima also asked what is the best cta for email marketing um ctas are not dependent on email marketing ctas are dependent on the campaign which you are running 
say for example if you are running a campaign to get more subscribers then you your cta should be subscribed now you know yeah start start your subscription that can be a cta similarly if you are running a campaign which is just for a discount then your cta can be claim your discount you give me my offer that can be a cta one thing which i can tell you is avoid ctas like learn more and no more those are done if you are going to use such ctas in your email marketing or landing page it's not going to do any favor to you have ctas which are more personalized intended for the audience so it is like if it is a discount i want my discount i or else uh, i need this these are actual ctas which you can go in for okay that is done sanjay says what happens with training and consulting companies roi keywords are more or less similar now uh, sanjay can you tell me what kind of training and consulting companies are we talking about management consulting okay so sanjay now in this case if you are finding when you are searching online and you know a um, lot of people are actually stuck with this whole uh, like let's say if i search for digital marketing right now example it showed me a lot of agencies which are already there now i cannot have i cannot compete with them because they have been there for a long time then what i would understand is uh what you need to do sanjay is you need to go niche you need to think about your keyword which is management consulting and who is your customer so let's say management consulting for manufacturers management consulting for in uh, maybe e-commerce so what happens at that point is suddenly you will start ranking higher this is now to do with your positioning who is your customer and you know we had this whole conversation about the burgers which i told you if i say my burger is for everyone i cannot target anyone but i have to go about it ki okay my burger is only for moms and that also not every mom but a working mom okay or else i could go in for my burgers are for homemakers then i can rank for burgers and homemakers similarly you can rank for management consulting and uh, maybe fortune 500 companies so you have to look at such long keywords where you can find your niche okay customer experience employee engagement and again these are things which you you can compete for like let's say for example if i was to search for management consulting okay now what's happening is over here people are talking about what to expect this is again similar as digital marketing people don't know what is management consulting so they want to understand what is management consulting so that's why you have hbr which is harvard business review or mckinsey coming over here over here if you want to rank what i would suggest is become a guest author on these sites okay you should be able to write an article for forbes you should be able to write an article for hbr mckinsey and then you can be ranking higher on this that would be a better site strategy now if i search for management consulting e-commerce now what has happened is there is suddenly some other kind of uh, you know uh, here i have got an aggregate now if you see over here one thing is not a lot of people are running ads right now at this moment for this particular thing uh, i would also do uh, management consulting corporates so there is corporate finance corporate profile you know so on and so forth so i can pick up one niche and start working on that so if you see even cora is coming and cora has one answer over here let's see what this answer is about okay and if you can write a better answer over a period of time and you can get more people and this answer is like you know in 2015 it has been written it's about corporate finance versus management consulting he has written this and there are 5.5000 views 
trust me on this i'm saying uh, sanjay here's here's the easy way to go about this write an answer which is way better than this one okay and get he just has 11 upvotes okay try to get around 20 upvotes and you will get it i understand your uh, problem which you are saying coda does not have the right audience i understand it but i am saying your name will start coming up on top and google will use this information if it is connected to your website so coda is a authority website if you have given a top answer there then google will understand that signal going back to your website and it will rank your website higher for management consulting it's not about just the right audience at that point it's about the relation it's like say for example if you want a uh, you don't know me you just know me through these webinars right now if one of your friends is asking you for maybe a digital marketer okay and he is you are not connected to digital marketing you are connected to management consulting but one of the names which will come to your mind is hey jeet hai jeet ke sath main baat karta hu ya baat karwata hu so i don't know whether you have the right audience for my business but i know because i have maybe impacted you little bit okay that you will have me on top of your mind when you are when someone talks to you about digital marketing so that's how google also works it's just based on connection you might not be the right audience for you might not have the right audience for me is what i can say right now and then not give you value but you might uh, you know the trust which we are building right now that is what is going to transfer and that is what is going to transfer even on google through quora so that's how it was i i hope you understand but this is just one of the things which i said as a hack which you can do the other thing which you also need to do is if you see mckinsey is a name which is coming here bain is a name which is coming here you need to look at what these guys are doing right you know mckinsey writes amazing articles okay which are which give you such strategic information and such tactical information can you get something like that done can you be uh can you appear on such panels or something so these are these are few things which you need to look at and then you can start uh thinking about these things right i hope i hope that answers your question purva purva says while i understand why large format blogs are required uh but with everyone shortening content because of less attention would 40k word article actually work or would 2 3 2 to 3000 words suffice uh see pura it's not a question about the attention span okay attention span is lesser of audience on um on social media i agree so social media pe you should not go on and on and on but when a person comes on youtube suddenly that attention span has widened if you so imagine 30 seconds ka video wo reels pe ya instagram pe dikhta hai but wo same banda jab youtube pe aata hai he sees a vlog of 10 minutes if i put that person on netflix he might see a movie for 2 hours also he might binge watch the shit out of that movie so it is 2 hours into 10 20 hours usne udhar dal di okay so attention span is not the uh, criteria out here it is why you need a 40k word article it's not see it's not just for the number of 40k the idea is simple there are two things one is are you an expert how do you position yourself as an expert you can you can write an article but that is not the criteria out here the idea is what is the value which you are adding over and above what these guys are adding like say for example right now strategy and corporate finance consulting if i go over here and the page which is getting ranked when i search for that it is how we help clients and they have got you know this whole big page wherein they are uh, showing all their team members they are showing uh, some few links and so on and so forth now if i have to actually and it has got all these different uh, things uh, corporate strategy and all those things 
if i were to think of competing with these guys i will have to think of content which is way better than this and way better content does not mean the same format the problem which uh, you know right now on seo which people are doing is they are copying uh, they are ripping off articles and then changing a uh, few things here and there and that is actually uh, making it more uh, you can say confusing for people and it's throwing across skewed information on google which is again google will not understand what do i rank so that is not going to help you what is going to help you is if you can write such long format articles then it's good to write otherwise i would not tell you to do it like i if you look at digital marketing and seo if you would search you will land up on um one second let's do this seo ranking if i search just this 10 crucial seo ranking factors search engine ranking 2021 a all these things improve your seo in 30 minutes step by step guide to improve in rankings now what i will go to is this particular thing the step by step guide if you see this article now he is continuously talking about different things which a person needs to do step by step to improve their ranking this is useful content google if even if the person does not read it google will send its spider google has an algorithm which actually reads all your uh, you know articles and it figures out this is good stuff this makes sense and then uh, the intention is not just to rank in seo over here but you can also think of ranking here how can i check my seo ranking that is one question okay so this what people ask is a great section if you just make your content around these questions so you can make uh, you can take these questions and you can answer them in your blog similarly what are people searching for when seo ranking people are searching for all of these things so if you can make an article which talks about all of these things mix match so your 40000 word article is not a single article it is a bunch of maybe 2000 word ka hi article hai but 2000 into 20 is equal to 40000 i hope you understand so that's a a way in which i would want you guys to think about you know ranking on seo the long page why it's required uh, and who will read it you cannot read that long why people started suggesting 300 word 350 words because people started saying uh, mobile pe padhne ke liye aasan hoga but guess what people who read on mobile phones are not your customers a person who reads a blog is a person who reads a blog not on a mobile phone but on a ipad or maybe a desktop or a laptop so this is this is information which we need to understand now you need to also start making content which is more visual which is more simple for mobile people so mobile ke jo log hai those become your top of the funnel people who are seeing only you know small short stuff but wo short stuff se bade article pe lana aapka kaam hai and wo kab aayega jab wo bande ko zarurat rahegi but wo bande ko zarurat jab rahegi aapka pehle dimag mein naam hona chahiye that's what we want so seo is not ranking on google search but it's to get into the top of the mind of the person okay second thing about seo one more thing just to make make it clear it is search engine optimization search engine optimization it is not google search engine optimization what i mean by this is when you are thinking about seo don't just limit it to google also think about social seo social media pe bhi aap jab ja rahe ho aapka wo seo ke andar hi aata hai okay so your social content should be in such a way you should use certain keywords in such a way that you get ranked for those keywords like say for example if i go to linkedin
And when I go to LinkedIn and I search for, uh, let's say, management consultant. Okay. Now, this is important for uh, uh, you, Sanjay. If I search for people, management consultant, Nitin Khandelwal comes on top. Jabki wo bande ne apna image bhi nahi dala. Okay. Now, Sanjay, you should figure out how are these top 10 people ranking for management consultant? The answer lies in their profile. And if I see Sanjay Rawat, let's say, uh, Sanjay, can you help me out here? Okay, so see, now when I'm searching for Sanjay Rawat management, I'm seeing this. Is this you, Sanjay? Any idea? Awesome. So when I'm searching for Sanjay Rawat management, your name is coming. Okay. So this is great in terms of that one part, but when I look at this now, customer and employee experience is one thing which you have added. One second. So customer and employee experience is one thing which you have added training and consulting you have added. But even Yejo cheese and training and consulting the way um, the way we have written it, let's say I will just open this on the side. And should I put training and consulting as a keyword versus uh, management consulting? One second, let me see what you have written training and consulting. Yeah, customer employee experience. Okay. okay, so if we look at training and consulting, again, training consulting may upka nam upper nihi are. Okay. So what I would suggest is look at what these profiles have done. Why are they coming on top? So let's open these. Now, if you see over here, this guy has put it as corporate training and consulting. So, usne utna sa kiya training. So, if you see on this page, the word training he has used around eleven times. Okay, Sanjay. And if we look at your profile, let's look at this. Abhi aapka training yahan pe use hua hai. Okay. But in your about, it does not talk about training. It talks about trainer. I can see that being one of the reason if you see over here, this guy. So, aapke paas 30 times you have put in training over there, but it is always in connection to something else. It's always in connection our expertise. It's talking about this company, the employee connect. Over here, you're talking about first venture into training and consulting. This is about SR. It's not related to you directly. It is related to you, but still, I hope you get the picture. Aapko ye word aapke naam ke saath jodna hai. Let's look at some other things. Even over here, you can see she has used training, training. 
एंड नीचे हर जगह पे ट्रेनिंग 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 आ गया नाउ द वर्ड ट्रेनिंग यूज हो रहा है आई थिंक यू स्टैंड अ चांस टू एक्चुअली बी ऑन टॉप बिकॉज यू आर यूजिंग इट मोर बट ओनली थिंग पुट इट इन योर अबाउट मेक इट समथिंग लाइक विच पीपल सी इट विच लिंक्ट इन विल अंडरस्टैंड एंड दैट विल गिव यू दैट बूस्ट सेकेंड थिंग वट आई वुड ऑल्सो मैंशन टू यू इज पुट इन अ बैनर ओके पुट इन अ बैनर ओवर यर दैट वुड ऑल्सो हेल्प यू बिकॉज अदर पीपल दूसरे लोग ऐसे ही ऊपर हैं फॉर सम रीज राइट लेट्स लुक एट दिस गाय ऑल्सो ही जस्ट एस टू एरियाज वे विशा ट्रेनिंग एंड सम थिंग फिर भी ये ऊपर है क्रेजी so i am saying when we talk about all of these things seo and all you have to look at so many factors and it's not just limited to search engines on uh, like google it is also on social think about it think of your instagram profile usme bhi aap ye words use karo and you will see a uh, uh, you will see ki aap zyada acche se rank honge right so guys i think with this we are more or less um i don't see any more questions from your side so we are more or less done with this whole session uh thanks a lot for sticking through it was a it was great interacting with you guys as always next saturday at 11 am we are doing a live blog writing uh you can say session wherein you guys will pick the topic you guys will um tell me what should i write on and i will just go ahead and churn out almost i think a 2000 word article in one and a half to two hours with research with seo practices with images i will try to do images if i get i need 15 minutes 15 minutes for images and all but i will show you what it takes to completely from scratch think about an idea okay which you will decide i will give you few options you will pick the idea i will pick pick that up i will do my research online in front of you and i will start writing it left right and center all the time telling you what is going in my mind and why am i writing what i am writing okay with this we come to an end of this week session thanks a lot again see you guys next time if there is any feedback feel free to get in touch with me feel free to reach out to me at jeet@singularity.in you can also connect with me on linkedin at jaljeet ajani and instagram at jeet ajani thanks a lot guys stay safe and enjoy yourself cheers bye bye